In this tutorial, we will be using the Python programming language to break a keyword cipher. We have a cipher text uh, that has been encoded using a keyword, but we do not know what the keyword is, and so we need to try to break the message using a technique known as frequency analysis. When we look at breaking ciphers, uh, the, there is a, a sliding scale of how difficult this is going to be. A very simple cipher like Atbash, which reverses the alphabet, can only be broken in one way and only encoded in one way. So it's very easy to break such a cipher. The Caesar cipher, where we shift the alphabet along, can have 25 available shifts before we repeat back to the start again. So again, brute force is an easy way to tackle this kind of cipher. But a keyword cipher could use any kind of keyword at all. It could be a word from the English dictionary. It could be a name or it could just be a random jumble of letters that makes the initial keyword. So this is a very difficult cipher to break, but we can use Python to help us with this process. Uh, this Tutorial uses Replit to do the Python coding, and you can log on to repl.it for free and use that to make your code. One of the things that we will be using is a special Python library called Collections, and one of the functions in there called Counter. This simple program shows you uh, what happens if we give a message and then use counter for that message, what it does is it counts how many occurrences there are of each character. So we can see there are six A's, four B's, two C's and one D in this message. And this will allow us to perform frequency analysis uh, with the computer doing the counting for us. Here is our starting point for decoding the message. So the message here, the ciphertext, quano, uno, quoi, bi, quao, and so on, is clearly gibberish. Uh, what we need to do is to try and translate our keyword alphabet into a standard alphabet in order to replace each character with the appropriate substitution. So I have a replit with this uh, made already. And uh, I'm just going to uh, have a look at this. Notice that uh, we have the alphabet here all in lowercase. And then the original letters will be in uppercase. We also have some special characters, full stop, the new line. So slash n there is new line at the end of a line. Dashes and exclamation marks and commas. If I run this program, You can see that two things have happened. One is that the counter has counted up the occurrence of each individual letter. And the other thing is that the capital letters have been replaced with their lowercase equivalents uh, to make the decoded message. Clearly, this is not a decode. It hasn't actually turned it into proper English. However, we can see a number of things. First of all, there were 22 spaces and there were 17 O's in the message. So if I follow the instructions, we can see that uh, O being the most popular letter is likely to be replaceable with the letter E. So I'm going to go to my alphabet and above O, I'm going to put a capital E as a replacement. And I'm going to run that again and see how if that if that's helped us to decode the message. So on Replit, here is the capital letter O. Above it, I'm going to highlight this lowercase O and replace it with capital E. When I run the program again, counter will remain the same, but I've started to decode the message down in the console area. 
And I now have quine, uin, qui, be, and so on. Now, it doesn't seem to be much better, but actually we now have a few clues that might help us to make further uh, inroads into breaking this code. So, the next thing to do now is to look at uh, what we have here. And you can see that there is QAE, QAE, and then further down, QAE with an X on the end. So this is a repeated word within our coded message. We can probably guess that something something E, a three letter word ending in E, is probably the word the. It's possible that it could be something like R uh, or she or something like that, but there's a good chance that it is the very common word the. So we're going to replace Q with uh, the letter T and A with the letter H in our alphabet. Back to replet, the letter Q here, we're going to replace that with T. I have caps lock switched on. And the letter QAE, so A has to be replaced with an H. So the technique here is every time we guess a letter, we replace it with a capital version in the lowercase alphabet. We then run the program again, and we see if we can guess any of the message from common words or for common occurrences of letters. If we had a single letter, that's highly likely that would be the letter A or the letter I, since this is the only one letter or words that we normally use in the English alphabet. Okay, so where have we got to? Well, the very first word there, T-H-E something E, uh, if we think about possible options there, that could be the word these or the word there. So let's start off and assume it might be these. If we replace the lowercase n with an uppercase s, then we might be some way towards breaking our code. So I'm going to try that. Uh, lowercase n replaced with uppercase s. And then I run my program. And I get these something, 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 something. Now, this second word, something ESE, are there any four letter words that start with a letter and then have ESE? I can't think of any four letter words that that could be, so maybe that was a bad guess. I'm going to put my S back to an N. And I'm going to try the other option, which was maybe lowercase n was going to be replaced with an R instead to make the word there. So n, instead of s, I'm replacing it with R. I'll take caps lock off since that's constantly making mistakes. And if I run this, I now get there something. Now, can we think of four letter words that begin with something and then have E R E? Uh, there's things like uh, where, there, where sounds like a good start. Uh, there are, there's other words like mere or um, here, there, here. But there, where sounds as if it might be a good start to a sentence. So let's assume that that is now a good replacement. The N replaced with R is making progress. Let's go ahead and take that to their where uh, idea. So we need to replace uh, in our code here, a U is gonna replace with a W. So I go to capital U, I go above it, I replace little u 
with capital W. I run again. And then we start to pick apart any new clues that we have. There were something, they were te and something that ends in I there. Okay, having a look at some of the things, uh, one of the clues we can use from English, our frequency analysis, is there are only certain letters that are doubled. Things like E and T and O can make E, T and U. And we have one word that has a double T in the middle of it and an E at the end. We've also got uh, a word, capital R, and then ends with a double letter, and a similar word where it's reused. So there are a number of possibilities for R, J, G, G. It could be something like riff, or rough, or rill, or roll, or ross, or russ. Uh, so we think about all the possibilities. Um, we are then looking to do a replacement that might make sense. Uh, that same word, R-J-G-G-E, uh, has to be able to end. So whatever that is, we'd have to have an ending E something. E-S or E-D perhaps. The next thing I'm going to do is we're going to try replacing G with L. So that we'd get rill or roll as a word here. And let's try replacing uh, B with a letter I. So we're saying that G is going to go to the letter L and B is going to go to the letter I. So there were something, 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 the something, something, the little something, and we've got R, that's rill or roll. So I reckon that capital J, there's a good chance that that's going to be roll. So I'm coming up here to J. I'm going to replace that with an O. And hopefully we can now see this process starting to come together. Roll otter, there's an, a word here. Uh, what four-letter word can have a second letter in there that would make sense? Ober, ochre, odor, and so on. So we eventually work our way through and figure out what our replacements are. We can also use the frequency chart here to show the common letters. So um, we can see, for example, that the most common letters are things like E and T we've already got, but A, O, I and N are fairly common. And if we look back at our counter, our most common letters are things like J and Q and N. So these are good candidates for being the other vowels. Uh, there were T, E, I. I is a common letter. So let's replace I. with N. There were 10 in the something, something, the little one, something, roll. Now clearly this O-T-E-R, the T needs to be replaced with a V. There were 10 in the something, something, the little one, something, roll over, roll over. Po, vex, cool. What two letter words do we have that have got an O? We've got do, we've got so, we've got to. We've already used T, um, we haven't used D yet. Do the something. Well, P, we're going to replace with S. And notice we start to get runs of letters. 
R S 